Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Dr. Coyle and I am the Medical Director of Progressive Women's Health and I'd like to welcome you here today. You're being referred to us uh, by your doctor uh, to uh, discuss either urinary loss or some kind of uh, prolapse issues or both. Okay, and so the purpose of this video today is one to kind of introduce myself to you. We're going to talk a little bit about stress incontinence or urinary incontinence uh, and we're also going to talk about pelvic organ prolapse. Pelvic organ prolapse is where things are kind of falling out, okay? Um, and so we're going to discuss these things and then I'm also going to tell you a little bit about the exam that you're going to have today because it is different than uh, a normal exam. And then we're going to talk about some more uh, things that we do to really try to figure out what is going on with you, your bladder, or your uh, prolapse uh, and come to the conclusion of what's going to be the best treatment option for you. Okay, so once again, welcome, and uh, I'm very excited that you're here. And so let's talk a little bit about incontinence. Incontinence is just the simple loss of urine. There are multiple reasons for urinary incontinence, and urinary incontinence is what we call a multifactorial problem. Okay, there are some main reasons for urine loss. One of the main ones, uh, or most common, is called stress incontinence. Stress incontinence is when you leak urine because of coughing, sneezing, laughing, or lifting something heavy, or jogging, or jumping on a trampoline, okay? Um, let's look at this in, in kind of a, a pictorial fashion. There's two main reasons why people leak urine because of stress incontinence. If this is your bladder, and this is your urethra, one of the main reasons is the urethra moves too much. We call that urethral hypermobility, okay? Um, the second is the door between the bladder and the urethra, called the sphincter. If it's not closing properly, you'll also leak urine with coughing, sneezing, and laughing. Okay? So stress incontinence, for the most part, is because the urethra is moving too much or the door that's holding water from the bladder to the urethra is not closing all the way. Another major type of urine loss is called urge incontinence. Urge incontinence is when you have that urge to go and you may not be able to get to the bathroom in time. You also can have urgency or frequency to where you just have a, an overactive bladder, to where your bladder fills up. You may not leak urine, but you're like, I need to go, I need to go right now and get to the bathroom. The normal female goes to the bathroom six to eight times a day. And so if you're going to the bathroom more than that, you may have an urgency frequency problem or have a very low bladder capacity, okay? That then can also go into actually urge incontinence to where you have an urge to go to the bathroom and you'll leak before you get there. For example, if you're driving in your car, you pull up in your driveway and you have an urge to go to the bathroom, you leak before you actually get to the bathroom. That's urge incontinence, okay? Now, stress incontinence, where the urethra moves too much or the door doesn't close, typically is treated with some kind of surgical procedure. Okay? Urge incontinence is usually treated with either medication or another procedure that I do here called interstem. Okay? We'll talk about those in just a little bit. Pelvic prolapse or pelvic organ prolapse, where things are falling out that is another major problem that you can also have in conjunction with the urine problem okay and so you may be coming in because you actually see a bulge in the vagina or you have pelvic pressure or your doctor may have seen a bulge in your vagina see something falling out okay so let's talk about the vagina in terms of of a sock okay and so if you think about a sock for a minute the opening of the sock is the opening of the vagina the toes of the sock is the top part of the vagina or where the uterus is if you still have your uterus. Okay? The bladder sits right here, the rectum sits right here, and then the cervix or the top of the vagina is right here. When the bladder falls down and comes to the opening of the vagina, that's called a cystocele or an anterior vaginal wall defect where the bladder comes this way. If the rectum pokes up, and pokes out into the vagina, that's called a rectocele, okay? The top part of the vagina or the uterus could be falling out to where the sock actually turns inside out 
and it's coming completely out of the body and that's called either a uterine prolapse or a vaginal vault prolapse okay now here's the great story you can have one of these or you could have all three of those okay and so part of the exam today is going to be a different exam than you've ever had done before it's called a pelvic organ prolapse quantitation scale you may be coming only because of leaking urine and you may not feel any of this uh, pelvic prolapse I still want to do this exam on you because you still could have uh, some prolapse and just not know it alright and so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna be measuring nine specific points of your pelvis today so when you come in the room um, I'll first come in and talk to you but then once we get to the exam point um, it's gonna be an interactive exam and what I mean by that is that you're gonna be participating in this exam with me okay I'm gonna have you bearing down I'm gonna have you coughing so that way I can see the extent of the prolapse that you may have please do not be alarmed or worried or concerned about leaking urine or leaking anything else that's why you're here okay you're here for me to fix that alright so I want you to, to give a true representation of what it is that you're doing okay so I'm gonna have you cough I'm gonna have you bear down whatever it takes and, and we're gonna measure your prolapse once we do that we're also going to measure how much your urethra moves. So I will take a Q-tip with some jelly on it, some lidocaine jelly, and we'll place that gently into the uh, urethra, and I'll have you cough and bear down, and we'll see how much your urethra moves. The normal female's urethra should only move 15 to 30 degrees, like this. If you're somebody whose urethra moves 80, 90 degrees, that may be a major reason why you're leaking urine. Okay? Um, after the exam, today, before you walk out of this office, you will know, do you or do you not have any pelvic prolapse, or does your urethra move too much? Okay? Now, we're not quite done yet because I need to know more about your bladder to determine exactly what's going on. Now, what if you're somebody who has pelvic prolapse, but you don't leak urine? You say, well, I don't, le I don't need the, anything else. I have prolapse. Well, let me tell you something if here's your bladder and here's your urethra if your bladder is hanging out you may not leak urine when you cough sneeze and laugh and the reason is is because the water has to go backwards uphill and then out and when you cough or bear down you actually kink off your urethra okay and so if I lift up your bladder and if I don't do anything to fix the urethra you may leak urine after the procedure and so that's why you know we need to go through this to make sure that we know exactly what's going on with you okay so today walking out of the office you'll know whether you have any prolapse or not you'll also know about your urethra and then we're going to set you up an appointment for urinary dynamics this is where you'll meet my nurse practitioner uh, Amy she is absolutely wonderful you'll love her uh, and what she'll do is she'll take a very small catheter place that up inside your your bladder She'll take another catheter and place it inside your vagina or your rectum, depending on if you have prolapse issues or not. And then she'll start to fill your bladder. When she fills up your bladder, she's going to be asking you for some sensations. She's going to ask you what the first sensation that you feel your bladder filling. She'll ask you um, when you feel like you're, you're, you need to go to the bathroom or when you pull off the side of the road to go pee. Okay? what she's trying to do is trying to determine what your bladder capacity is do you have a very low bladder capacity do you have a very high bladder capacity okay she'll also see if she can get you to leak and she'll measure at what capacity you leak in addition to that she's also going to measure the door these catheters have a fiber optic tip on them and measure pressure and so as she pulls that catheter out it's going to measure the closure pressure of that door and so we'll know if your door is closing good or not. In addition to that, she's also going to check to see if you are somebody who has urgency, does your bladder contract before you have a chance to to go to the bathroom, okay? Uh, so she'll be measuring that. And then um, she'll also be measuring how well you're emptying your bladder. Are you able to empty your bladder all the way? Some people leak urine because they're not able to empty their bladder. And so once she fills you, she'll then have you void and actually measure how much you empty. Okay? After the, the urinary dynamics, the last appointment uh, we're going to set you up for is called a cystoscopy. 
A cystoscopy is just a simple appointment to where you come in and I take a very small camera and I look inside your bladder. The purpose of that is to make sure that everything is normal inside your bladder. We don't want to go to the hospital and do you know, all this major reconstructive vaginal surgery or even just a small little sling without knowing do you have anything abnormal inside the bladder. Okay, It's very simple, easy to do, and certainly rules out any kind of tumors or masses or anything like that. Okay, Now, at that appointment, at the third appointment, I would like you to bring a family member or a friend with you. The reason is, is because instead of making you come back for another appointment to discuss uh, any kind of options, I want to go ahead and deal with it at that point. At that point, we'll have all the information that we need. I will know exactly what's going on with you and your bladder and your vagina, and then we can say, all right, well, what do we need to do? Okay, so right after the cystoscopy, I'll let you get dressed, and then we'll bring your family member in or your friend in, and then we'll sit down and I'll say, this is exactly what's going on with you, and here are your options. It is better sometimes to have four ears instead of two because I know that sometimes, you know, I may say something and then when you walk out of here you go, what did I say or what did he say? And that's, that's perfectly normal because I do go over a lot of information and that's why it's really nice to have somebody else with you so that way you guys can talk about it on the way home, okay? You'll also be given um, a preoperative instruction sheet at that time as well that will have everything that we talked about on it, okay? Now, just to kind of give you some quick ideas of some of the things that we have here. You're fixing your bladder. If you leak urine with coughing, sneezing, and laughing, or, or whatever, we can be going from something very simple that we can do here in the office to something obviously more complex, okay? There are things that we do here in the office, um, like a Renessa procedure we can talk to you about, and we'll give you handouts on uh, for stress incontinence. Um, there's also a procedure that, that we do, we, I mentioned a little bit about it, it's called the inner stem procedure, uh, which is a neuromodulator for the bladder. If you're somebody who uh, you have been on Detrol or Ditropan or Enablex or Vesicare and you still have the urgency and you still leak urine, or if you're somebody who has interstitial cystitis, um, you may be somebody who would be a candidate for the inner stem procedure. Uh, and we'll give you some handouts on that. That is very simple. We do uh, part of it here in the office to where we place these tiny little electrodes by the nerves that supply the bladder and modulate those nerves. Okay? Urgency can either be from an inherent bladder problem or a nerve problem and we need to determine that. Okay? Um, as far as pelvic prolapse um, where the things are falling out uh, that can be done either vaginally or certainly uh, the gold standard that we do here, uh, the uh, sacrocopal pexy. That's where we take that top part. If the top part of the vagina is falling out, we take that and we attach that back. And we do use the, uh, the very new and latest uh, technology for that. We use the Da Vinci robot um, and do a robotic sacrocopal pexy. And so uh, it's, it's absolutely amazing. It has taken a, a procedure that um, has big incision in the hospital three to four days completely out of it you know to now we do this procedure you go home the next day through a couple little bitty holes and you're perfect it it really has revolutionized uh, what's going on okay so that's basically the gist I hope that you've uh, um, learned a little bit and uh, I'm very excited about meeting you and so we'll be I'll be coming in to talk to you in just a few minutes to get a good history on you specifically uh, and then um, we will uh, uh, get moving Okay, so I'll see you in a minute.